Greetings. Welcome to Learner Burn Studios. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to deinvest a bronze skull from ceramic shell. To get into this, as always, I'm going to jump in and, and really kind of get into the minutia of it. Yes, sometimes you know breaking out your shells is as simple as smashing it with a big hammer, but that's a, a brutal way to go about it, and ultimately you put your castings at risk. So I want to talk about a variety of different you know approaches, tools, and goals in breaking out our shells, and ultimately. We also will want to look at the shell itself and kind of a, do a post-mortem, so to speak, and look at the materials and, and as a way to evaluate and improve our castings in the next round. And with that said, let's get started. Quenching a, a hot casting in ceramic shell isn't as beneficial as quenching a standard investment in a bucket of water. Standard investment in that situation, it's, it's fragile enough that the steam that's generated from a hot casting will help pulverize that material and you know, help de-invest or evacuate it from the investment. For a ceramic shell though, yes, it'll cool down the casting, it will generate a certain amount of steam and it'll seem like it's loosening it up, but the reality is, is that it's not doing enough uh, contraction and it's not degrading the material in such a way that's really going to help you in evacuating or deinvesting it from your bronze casting or aluminum casting or whatever metal you're working with. What I found is that if you wind up quenching your ceramic shell in water, it, it, it reabsorbs water. It doesn't dissolve. The negative spaces within the ceramic shell will absorb a certain amount of water and it actually makes the ceramic shell less fragile, i.e. harder to get off. The best first thing you can do after pouring your metal is to ultimately walk away. What you want to do is you want to allow the casting to just cool on its own. Once I get done with all my pours, I'll walk away, cool down, get something to eat, take a break, allow the casting, allow the metal to fully contract. And by doing so, you have to remember that the ceramic shell is extremely inert and extremely uh, dimensionally stable. So as the metal contracts, it's gonna actually break and start cracking the shell. As we can see here in this casting, there's actually a, quite a, you know, a nice sizable cracks running up the cup, up and around the, the back of the skull, around the jawline. And so by allowing the metal to fully cool, you're, allow, you're actually letting the metal do a certain amount of the work in compromising the investment and make it, eventually making it easier to deinvest. And once I realized that if I just let my castings cool all the way down, more specifically, allow the ceramic shell to stay bone dry. When I attacked it with sandblaster, really was able to be aggressive with and reveal the details of your casting. When you're working with these materials, you really want to be using a, a real respirator and something that, that actually fits your face. So if you're a small person, don't be wearing a, large, a size large, and if you're a large person, don't be wearing a size, you know, size small. When you're picking up your respirators at the store, um, usually the big box stores, uh, they pretty much only sell mediums, but if you have a chance, you know, if you can order from a safety supply place, they actually do sell smalls, larges, and occasionally even extra larges. Okay, so one of the things we want to, you know, talk about real quickly is, are the tools you want to use. And, it's, and it seems overly simplistic, it's like going, oh, well, you know, hammer, hammer and chisel and whatnot, but it's like going, but there's a variety of hammers and a variety of different chisels. So let's take a quick look at a few, you know, simple tools uh, that will help uh, facilitate you know, breaking out. If all you have is, is, is a claw hammer, then so be it, use the claw hammer. But be mindful of the fact you can have a kind of a sharp or a, a not, it's not quite sharp, but you know, the, the, pr the profile on the edge of a typical hammers is that it's you know, flat across the surface and the next plane is 90 degrees. That edge can mar the surface of your metal. If you, are, if you do have to use just a standard hammer or a sledgehammer or whatever you have, you know, that's fine, but just be careful that you want to attack it on its full face or you utilize it in combination with a punch or a, a chisel to be able to direct your blow and direct that, that kinetic energy to be able to crack the shell. But with that said, I prefer to actually use a, a ball peen. It has a broader surface and it's less likely that I'm gonna catch an edge and mar my surface. And the same with the chisels. You know, the, the instinct is like on, if you're using a chisel, is that you wanna use a sharp, sharp chisel. Well, the ceramic shell is a, it's, it's basically fired ceramic. If you're using a sharp chisel on basically trying to carve through your coffee cup, 
you're going to ultimately dull your tool, tools out. So at a minimum, designate a certain, you know, some of your tools specifically for this task. And, but realistically, it's even worthwhile to kind of dull these edges down just a bit. Because realistically, as you start you know, pushing through the shell, you're inevitably going to wind up striking your metal at some point. You're going, we're going to do everything we can not to do that, but I'll also guarantee that after you're knocking out a bunch of shells, that you'll get tired, you'll get lazy, you'll just you know, lose your focus and you will strike the metal. So knowing that that situation is going to occur at some point, we're going to choose our tools or even modify our tools in such a way that when that occurs, it's going to create a mark, but it's going to be a mark that we can more easily chase and uh, fix. One of the things I'd like to use are these literally these you know, kind of punches. They're referred to as a punch, and typically they come off come with a, a flat edge, but I typically will take them to a grinder and round them off. So I basically have a little mini ball peen, you know, striking force. And that'll allow me to kind of get into the details. I do have a couple of punches that, that do have a point to them, because ultimately there, are, there is a time and, and a place for everything. And there's a time when you're going to have to get into a little bit more details, but I don't go out of my way to resharpen these things as they dull out. And then ultimately, you can also find these uh, little sets of picks, and you know whether it's hooks, you know they have a, a couple of different things, and then these can be nice for you know getting into nooks and crannies. So the first step is to just let the metal cool and do some of your, some of the work for you. The next step is to go in with your hammer, approach opening up. Um, you're casting like opening up a soft boiled egg. With a light touch, move my way around the surface. As I do that, I'll wind up forming some cracks and you'll notice you'll start having larger elements, larger pieces of shell start breaking away from the casting. The next step is that once you've exposed the cup in this manner, you can actually take your hammer and really just start using vibration. And you can utilize a certain amount of that vibration through the metal that will also help de-invest your piece. Once the majority of the shell is, is fallen away from the casting, then you can get in, with, in there with your, you know, your smaller picks, your little chisels, little punches, knocking that material away. What we really want to focus on is we do want to remove as much of the investment as possible. Now, ultimately, if your casting has some super fine detail, super nooks and crannies, you know, deep nooks and crannies, it's best if you can just move to the sandblaster and to remove your the rest of your material. Now, I realize that, you know not everyone's going to have a, sand, a compressor and be able to have a sandblaster, but if you find yourself and you, so you can get away with using, you know, small picks. You can get away with using wire wheels. Um, I've seen if you can get a whole, if you have a pressure washer, I've seen some people um, have some success with that, but it has to be a, a pretty powerful uh, pressure washer to actually remove any of the shell, or at least you know the, the hardcore nooks and crannies stuff. If you really find yourself in a situation where you want to be doing ceramic shell on a regular basis, it will behoove you to, to make one of your first investments would be to be, get a compressor and ultimately so you can also run a, a sandblaster on that. Now, one of the benefits of also having a compressor is that there are a number of tools that we're going to talk about in the next video, you know, die grinders and whatnot uh, for chasing. But we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But for the moment, if you, again, if you're going to be working in ceramic shell, you'll find that having a sandblaster is the ideal way to remove the investment from your castings. Now, the one thing you want to be, one of the things you want to be careful with as you're cleaning up your metal is that you know, depending on how you know, chunky your tables are, and, and in particular, like mine are this kind of open grate, there's a lot of crap welding you know, spudge and everything on it. So, but this can you know, ding up our soft material. So it's always worthwhile, I'll grab an old glove and use that as a, just a pad or a barrier in between my casting and my table. Also, when I'm using the chisel on it, I'm not transferring that 
you know, vibration or picking up any kind of marks from my table. So it's always worth the, worthwhile to uh, protect your casting. Once I feel like I have enough of the investment off, then I'm gonna go ahead and cut the sprues. The, you know, the sprue system on this is super simple. It really is just cut, cutting the, the cup and the main gate off the back of the skull. Now, where I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it about a quarter inch off so I have enough metal to recreate the, the, the curvature of the back of the skull. If, you know, if I get too flat, too close to the, to the skull, I run the risk of when I go back into grinding actually finding out that I have a flat spot. And I wanna, wanna have that curvature as a way to hide where that gate was, or where that gate was positioned. I'm going to grab my air hammer, and in short bursts, I'm gonna knock out the core. I could, get, could go in with a hammer and chisel. Um, in this case, I do have an air hammer with, it, with, you know, with the air compressor, um, and it just makes the you know, work a little bit shorter, but both techniques work. And then ultimately, now that I have the, the, the bulk of the core out, I'm ready to take this to the sandblaster and remove the shell. It's always worthwhile to investigate. You know, look at the shell, the, the, the bigger chunks, look at the surface on the inside, get a sense of, you know, how, how your initial application was. You know, do you see, you know, voids? Did that translate to positive metal? In this case, we see some of the, you know, the, the crack, Actually, I guess in this piece, we can see where, you know, we actually patched the outside of this. We had a crack in the shell, but we look on the inside and we can see where, you know, that crack actually wound up being pretty tight and didn't tr really translate to the, you know, it, it made just, the, 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 just a hint of a, bit, a little bit of flashing on the casting, which would be super e easy to chase. Some of the other things we want to look at is the overall thickness of our shell. And in this situation, mine's running about 3 eighths of an inch thick, so it's a little thick. Ideally, I, I wanna shoot for my shells to be more like a quarter inch, especially for an object this size. Maybe even a little bit thinner than that, but quarter inch is a nice, nice thickness to be you know, going for. It's not a problem that my shell was 3 eighths of an inch thick. The casting came out just fine, but in the end, it probably did use a little bit more material. So it's hard to sell, tell whether it is I kind of count back through these tree lines or these layers of shell you know, I mean, it looks like I have 10, but it's hard to say. Maybe I miscounted and, and inadvertently dipped this shell twice or, or, you know, one too many times. But it's these kind of little details that we can investigate and look at and inspect that will allow us to improve our castings the next time around. Also, if nothing else, it's just kind of cool really to kind of see, I mean, really, the, this material just picks up all the detail you know, I mean, I didn't really have any fingerprints in that, but there's some really subtle, like the, the cranium lines, you know, the picking up these details in the bronze. Ultimately, that came from, you know, these details that we're seeing in the shell. And so it really, you know, really points out that there's almost no detail that this stuff can't pick up. Deinvested sandblasted, and we can see that we actually have a, a pretty decent casting. There are definitely things in here that are not ideal. Some, you know, little uh, bubbles of positive metal. We do have a couple of random tool strikes. It's hard to tell whether, you know, some of them I think actually might have been in the wax. Some of them were here being too aggressive uh, during this uh, demo. Um, and a few things I put in here on purpose so we can, you know, talk about how to fix things. 
Now we're ready. The next video, we're going to talk about how to make this, this pretty. We'll t you know, talk about the correct way of grinding down our gates and making them flush with the material, taking away any little details, pot of, positive metal, and then we could talk about you know, setting it up for actually a final sandblast or ways to clean it up and prep it for uh, patination. And until the next video, be creative and be safe. Thank <laughs> you.